In this video, we want to take a look at a few features on Cisco Catalyst switches that can help reduce the spanning tree protocol convergence time. We saw earlier that if we had a link failure, it might take 50 seconds to converge to start sending traffic around that link failure. And 50 seconds can be a very long time in a production network. That could be way too long for us. And we've already talked about rapid spanning tree protocol and saw how it could dramatically decrease this convergence time. However, if we're not running rapid spanning tree protocol, a couple of these features might help us out. Here are those three features. First is uplink fast. This is not something you need with Rapid Spanning Tree Protocol because Rapid Spanning Tree Protocol has a feature similar to this built into the standard. But what this does is it's going to allow a switch to detect a direct link failure. If a link fails on a switch, it's going to be able to transition a previously blocking port into forwarding almost immediately and then re-educate the switched topology about how to get to the MAC addresses that reside off of that switch. We typically see this at the access layer. Another feature we want to talk about, and again this feature is not needed with Rapid Spanning Tree Protocol because it has a similar feature built into the standard, but this feature is Backbone Fast. And we're going to see that Backbone Fast is going to allow a switch to reduce convergence time when it detects a link failure, but not a direct link failure, an indirect link failure. And finally, a feature that is useful for Rapid Spanning Tree Protocol as well as our other flavors of Spanning Tree Protocol, and it's Port Fast. When we're plugging an in station into a switch port, instead of waiting through the listening and the learning states for that port to go active, let's go active almost immediately when we connect. The first of these three features is uplink fast. And uplink fast is typically going to be configured on an access layer switch. In fact, we do not want to configure this on a switch that is a transit switch. In other words, it's a switch that sits in the path between the root bridge and another switch. That could cause issues for us. For example, on screen, we would not want to enable uplink fast on SW2 because that was a transit switch for SW4 to get to the root bridge. But we can enable it on SW4. That's an access layer switch connected to end user devices. And when we enable uplink fast, we enable it globally on the switch. It's not a port configuration parameter, it's a global switch parameter. And this feature is going to react to a direct link failure. Let me show you an example. Consider SW4 on screen. Notice it has a root port that goes directly up to SW2. Let's imagine that that link went down. In response to that, SW4 has a blocking port. And what does Spanning Tree Protocol do? It allows a blocking port to transition to a forwarding state if we lost our primary path to the root bridge, like we just did. And we're going to transition almost immediately because we saw that link, that port on our switch went down. We know that we can no longer get to the root via that port. And what we're going to do is unblock that port that gets us up to SW3. However, there's still a challenge. And the challenge is the various switches in our network have learned how to get to the MAC addresses that live off of SW4. I'm pretending that I've got a couple of laptops with MAC addresses of all A's and all B's. Switch SW2, for example, thinks to get to the all A's MAC address, I'm going to go straight down this link to SW4. And SW3 had been thinking to get to the all A's MAC address, I'm going to go over this link to SW2, and then we would go down to SW4. But that link between SW2 and SW4, it's not there any longer. And of course, over time, MAC address entries would age out and things would get okay, but we want to very quickly re-educate this topology about how to get to these MAC addresses that live off of SW4. Here's what Uplink Fast can do to speed that along. It's going to send a series of dummy multicast frames. I say dummy because it doesn't contain any meaningful data. It's just a frame that we can propagate throughout the network. And notice the source MAC address on these frames. Their source MAC addresses are going to be the MAC addresses of the devices hanging off of SW4. That's a way that we can quickly re-educate the topology about how to get to these MAC addresses. Now, let's see how to configure Uplink Fast. We enable it globally, so we go into global configuration mode, and from there we say spanning hyphen tree Uplink Fast. And then, if we want to confirm that Uplink Fast really is enabled on this switch, we can give the command show spanning hyphen tree Uplink Fast. And you can see in the first line of the output, it tells us that Uplink Fast is enabled. That's the first of our three features in this video. Uplink Fast, again, it's not needed if you're using Rapid Spanning Tree Protocol because Rapid Spanning Tree Protocol has us covered. It has a similar feature that's built into the standard. Our second feature is Backbone Fast. 
We said that Uplink Fast should typically be enabled on access layer switches. Well, if we're going to use Backbone Fast, we should enable it everywhere on all of our network switches. And when we enable it, we don't enable it at the port level. We globally enable it for the entire switch. And what it can do is allow a switch to react to an indirect link failure. For example, on screen, SW3 is about to react to a link failure between SW1 and SW2. Let's imagine that that link between SW1 and SW2 goes down. When SW2 loses that link, it's going to assume that it is now the root bridge. It lost its connection to the root. It must be the root. So what SW2 will do, it's going to send out a BPDU to switch SW3 saying, I am the root bridge. And this type of BPDU, this type of bridge protocol data unit that's being advertised from SW2, that's known as an inferior BPDU. It's inferior because the bridge ID that's being advertised as the root, switch SW2's bridge ID, is inferior to the bridge ID being advertised by SW1. And SW3, when it receives this inferior BPDU, it's going to notice that paradox. And it's going to be skeptical. If SW3 is configured for Backbone Fast, what it's going to do is proactively go out and check if it still has a path to the root bridge. And by the way, if we did not have Backbone Fast enabled, switch SW3 would receive this inferior BPDU and it's going to say, that's inferior and I'm going to ignore that. And that blocking port on SW3, it would wait for a 20 second max age timer before it started to transition to the forwarding state. It would wait 20 seconds and then it would go into listening and learning. But what Backbone Fast is going to allow us to do is eliminate that 20 second delay. We're getting rid of that max age timer delay because SW3 is going to try to determine does it have a path to the root? And what SW3 is going to do is send a message out of all of its other non-designated ports. In other words, any ports, including the root port, that could get it back to the root bridge. In this case, we just have one of those ports. It's the root port on SW3 going directly back to the root bridge. And it sends out what's called an RLQ, a root link query. And it's asking, hey, do I still have a path to the root bridge? And that query goes into the root bridge. And the root bridge says, why, yes, you do. Yes, I am the path to the root bridge. And it's me. It's SW1. This is an RLQ or a root link query reply that goes back to switch SW3. And now that switch SW3 knows that SW1 really is the root, it can let SW2 know about that. It's going to say, hey, SW1 is actually the root bridge. And when SW2 gets that information, it says, OK, I realize now that I had an inferior BPDU. The bridge ID of SW1 that I just learned about, thanks to SW3, is a better bridge ID than I have. And as a result, I'll stand down, I'll stop claiming to be the root bridge, and I'll say that my root port, the port that gets me to the root bridge, is the port on which I just heard this superior BPDU from SW3. How do we set up Backbone Fast? Almost identical to the way we set up Uplink Fast. With Backbone Fast, we're enabling this globally. We go into global configuration mode and say spanning hyphen tree backbone fast. And then to verify that it really is enabled on our switch, we can say show spanning hyphen tree backbone fast. And the first line in the output says backbone fast is enabled. And our third switch feature in this video actually is useful for rapid spanning tree protocol as well as other flavors of spanning tree protocol. In fact, we've already demonstrated this in a previous video. This was how we told rapid spanning tree protocol that a port was an edge port. What we can do is configure port fast on ports that connect out to network endpoints, printers, PCs, laptops, wireless access points. In other words, we're not connecting to any device that might be sending us a BPDU. We're not connecting out to another switch. And we can enable this on a port by port basis, or we might want to just turn it on globally. However, when we turn it on globally, it's only enabled for non trunking ports. If we've got a port that's doing trunking, PortFast is not going to be enabled for that. And the reasons we're huge fans of PortFast is it allows a port to go almost immediately into the forwarding state when we connect a device into a switch port. For example, this laptop on screen, if I plugged it into this switch, SW4 on Fast Ethernet 1 slash 0, if port fast were not enabled, it might have to wait for 30 seconds before that port went active. That port was not blocking before because it wasn't even up. 
So we don't have to wait through the 20 seconds of blocking, but we do have to wait through the 15 seconds of listening and the 15 seconds of learning for a grand total of 30 seconds before this port goes active. And with a lot of the PCs and laptops today that have solid state drives, SSDs, they can boot up very quickly, maybe quicker than 30 seconds. And they might run into an issue if they boot up in 15 seconds and send out a DHCP request to get their IP address and they hear no response. And the reason that could happen is it's taking 30 seconds for this switch port to go active. And what we can do is enable port fast where we're promising the switch that we're not going to connect this port to some other switch or some other device that might be sending BPDUs, something that might cause a loop. We're promising to connect this to something like an end user workstation. And we've already seen in a previous video how to configure port fast on a specific port. If you recall, we went into interface configuration mode. Let's say we're going into interface configuration mode for fast ethernet one slash zero slash one. And we would say spanning hyphen tree port fast. And it's not shown here on screen, but we saw it live earlier. After we enter that command, we get a big warning displayed on screen explaining that we should not be connecting this to other switches or something that might cause a loop because we're removing some of the spanning tree protection by doing this. But hopefully we truly are connecting this to an end station. That's how we can enable it on a port by port basis, but maybe you want to turn this on on all of your access ports. To do that, in global configuration mode, you can say spanning hyphen tree port fast default. And that's going to enable port fast on all of your non trunking ports, all of your access ports on your switch. And if you want to verify that port fast is running for a particular port on your switch, we can do something like this. We can say show spanning hyphen tree interface, give the interface identifier, and then the keyword of port fast. And we can see that yes, for fast ethernet one slash zero slash one, port fast is enabled for VLAN 300. That's a look at three features that might help us reduce the convergence time for spanning tree protocol. Again, no need to do uplink fast or backbone fast if we're doing rapid spanning tree protocol. It's already got similar features built in, but if we're using, for example, PVST plus, those can really help us reduce convergence time. And we said for all of our flavors of spanning tree, port fast might be a good option when we're configuring a port to connect out to an end station. Thank you.